Hey everyone, we're going to learn how to track video with XAPI with a simple template. Alright, so let's go to our website, learningdojo.ninja, and I'm going to come into the template section, and then I'm going to come down here to where it says local video XAPI wrapper. We're going to have other videos that cover how to do like the Vimeo and the YouTube wrappers as well. But I'm going to go ahead and download the, the template for the local video. Enter in your email and then go ahead and hit continue and then it will give you a download. You don't need to enter in any type of credit card information or anything like that. I'm going to click on download. It's going to download my project file. Uh, I will need to use a text editor to edit some of the text. So we can pull this up inside of Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up inside of Visual Studio Code. You can use Visual Studio Code for free. You can download that and use that to update some of this. You won't need to use a lot of code. You'll just need to update some of the code files. So I'm going to close out the welcome window and then I'm going to come into the JS folder and then go into settings.js. This is the only file that you actually need to update in order to get this running. Now you will need to swap out your own video. You will need to get your own uh, items in there. Just keep that in mind. But I'm going to go ahead and just change this first thing to XAPI reporting to be true. Now I do need to have my key, my reference, and my endpoint, and that comes from my learning record store. If you're using a learning record store already, you'll just need to get that information. If you're not, you can sign up for a free account at cloud.scorm.com, which is a great test LRS. Once you have a test LRS like this, you come into the XAPI LRS. We're going to go ahead and select the sandbox. You can select any one of those, but I'm just going to select the sandbox there. I'm going to go ahead and grab the endpoint. So if I come in, I'm going to copy this URL for the endpoint, and then I'm going to paste it inside of these quotes. Make sure you get it inside of those quotes here. Now, if you delete the quotes, you may run into some errors or anything, but the string needs to actually be inside of the quotes. Now, I also need an activity provider. If you don't have an activity provider here, make sure you click on Add Activity Provider, and this will give you a key and a secret in order to authenticate that these statements are okay to be sent over to this LRS. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the key and then paste that also within the quotes. And then I'm going to paste the secret as well. So copy the secret and then paste that inside of there. That's all I need to do to actually get this going and have this sent over to the LRS. Now there are some things that I actually need to set up visually. If I open up the index.html file here, and I have a plugin called Live Server, which you can install through the extensions here. But this allows me to preview what this looks like. Or you can actually come in and inside of the folder, so open up your folder, you can just double click on index.html to see this as well. All right, so this is the interaction. It's going to prompt me with my name. I'm going to go ahead and enter in my name, so Sammy McGee, and then enter in my email. Now, you can customize this to actually pull the data from a single sign-on if you wanted to, or you could actually customize this to be pull anonymous data if you just wanted anonymous data. That is up to you. You can go in and you can customize that. Right now, it's just prompting a user for a name and an email because with XAPI, you have to know who the person is in order to track the statements. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Save User Info. And so it's going to automatically start playing the video for me. Now, there are key points in this template where it sends over a statement. It sends over a started statement as soon as the video starts. It will send over a statement when they pause it and where they pause it. It will send over a statement once it gets to the middle of the video, no matter the length of the video. And then it will send over a statement when it finishes the end. And so those are key things for you to know. The code is fully up to you, and I'm going to show you where that code is, but that's the way that I've set it up by default. But you'll notice that I have my logo here, I have my title uh, here, I have an image here as well, and then the video. How do I change those things? Well, coming into my settings.js, this is where I can come in and change the name of the video. I can change in the path to the video. 
So if I double click on this and go into the media, it's pointing to this video right here, main.m4v. If you wanted to drag and drop in a new video, you just have to update this path to the new name. Now inside of these quotes is where I put in the new name, the title of the video, and then also the description of the video right there. And I could do copyright of whatever your company is from there. And then if you wanted to point to a different image, you can point to a different image there and just drag and drop something else in. So fully customizable for you to be able to do that. There is also one more thing, the object ID. The object ID is fully up to you and this is usually done with a URL. So learningdojo.net here, slash xapi, slash course one is how I identify this specific video here. Now you can do this, it, this doesn't even need to be a real URL. This is just something to identify with your company and then you can put whatever content in that you want. If you are using an LRS like Watershed or something like that, Yet Analytics, these IDs are important because that's how you create your reports inside of the LRS. So you'll want to notate that and keep track of that somewhere. All right, so that's all you really have to do. You can come into the media folder, you can update the logo.png if you name it the same thing, update a poster, which is like the initial shot of what the user sees before they hit play. You can update this me.jpg to be something else. Uh, if you wanted to get rid of that, you can get rid of that as well. So those are things that you can update by default. If I come into the index.html, I can also come in and update how the form looks like. So this initial form, this is the modal that gets popped up. I can update the separation bar. So you can see right here, bar separator. If I go into the CSS right here, this bar separator, it allows me to change the color and you can change whatever color that you want. So it matches more of your company and so forth. So, and this is fully customizable. If you're familiar with CSS, great. Go ahead and adjust this how you want. Let's go into the JavaScript JS the JavaScript main JS here. And you can see here, I have a bunch of different variables like duration time, current time, video halfway, and so forth. Now I am prompting a user if this XAPI reporting is enabled or set to true, that's when I prompt the user with that show. I am also updating the labels, grabbing whatever they put from the settings.js and putting it inside of there. Um, as soon as the video loads, I'm grabbing the duration time, I'm grabbing the halfway time as well. As soon as the video plays, now this is using media events, as soon as the video plays, it's going to send over a statement if that XAPI reporting is enabled. And this is where I go ahead and I pull in that start, the, the, the user has started, and it's going to pull in that, uh, that label, the object name, and so forth. On pause, I also grab the current time. And so I'm keeping track of the current time here. The on time update will keep track of the current time and every millisecond it actually updates. And I am rounding that time as well so I don't get the specific milliseconds. And this is where I also do the current time. So once it gets the current time is equal to halfway time, then I'm going to trigger a statement that they made it halfway. And then finally on ended, this on ended will send over if it's SCORM enabled, it will send over a SCORM completion, or if it's XAPI enabled, it will just send over the XAPI. Other things down here, this is the send basic statement. It is pretty much set up to allow different types of statements with different verbs and different uh, object names and so forth. And so that's why I'm calling that function throughout here, but I am passing in different parameters. If you're not familiar with JavaScript, you don't need to actually update these. You could just come into the settings.js, update what you know here, and then boom, it's ready to go. It's starting to send over to the LRS. I am just showing you that you could, if you wanted to, come in and update this and fully customize it as well. It's up to you. I'm giving you the code. You can go ahead and download this. You can manipulate it how you want to send over X API statements. But hopefully this has been a good video for you to get started. In upcoming videos, we're gonna talk about the YouTube template. Let me come back into here. We'll talk about the YouTube, the Vimeo API. We'll also talk about the Storyline X API, and then eventually this interactive video template. 
So a lot more to come. Stay tuned to this channel and you'll learn everything you need to know about XAPI. Yeah.